I believe we have a real Democrat here, Brian Fort Worth, the great WBAP. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Very well. Thank you. I would describe this foreign policy as strength through uh, selective use of force. Very interesting. And, and uh, how so? Um, I remember there back at the beginning of the Iraq War, I think part of the problem was we were overstretched in our military, and I think our enemies knew it. And I think now we've, we still have a strong military, but at the same time, we do have to make our priorities. I still am worried about North Korea, still worried about Iran. And I think that us going and fighting all over the place isn't going to help. I think Okay, but the to... choice the choice isn't going around fighting all over the place, quote unquote, is it? The choice is uh having a very strong military, second to none, remaining the uh the if not the sole, the most uh, uh powerful superpower of them all. And you say worried about North Korea and in Iran, uh, I don't see us doing anything whatsoever to contain them, do you? I do. I think that um, one, we're waiting for us to get better support from. I see. So, our so allies. the way forward is to wait for our allies. Now, you really think that's a uh, policy? I think that we have to have full home support when we go in. But I we're not going to... in. You don't have to go in. I don't believe we're going to fight uh, North Korea again. Why don't we arm up the Japanese and the South Koreans? Is that uh, provocative? You think? What did you say? I'm sorry? Why don't we arm up the Japanese and the South Koreans so they can fight for themselves and have a, uh, a nuclear deterrent of their own? What's wrong with that? I think adding nukes isn't the, the help. We end up having... So far, you haven't told us anything. All you said is strength through selectiveness, and I'm trying to find out where your selectiveness is. And so far, I can find it in a fortune cookie at my favorite Chinese restaurant, which is... <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, look, we got to get our allies. Uh, we we got to wait for them, and uh, that's just great. But uh, that's not leadership. That's not a foreign policy. Yes or no? I think it's definitely a foreign policy. No, it's not. It's a non-policy. It is recklessness, and I think that's what we've had. Forget about recklessness. Time. Forget about Bush. Forget about all that stuff. I'm asking you, what is your great hero's foreign policy? I told you, I think it's we apply pressure. Where no, you haven't to told me. Right You've moment. given me one sentence, strength through selectiveness. Okay, where have we shown strength through selectiveness? And your example is we haven't acted because we can't get our allies to support us against North Korea. Well, that's, that's irrational. North Korea stood down. It's what? North Korea stood down recently. North Korea has stood down? Why, because they weren't provocative last month? But the month before they were? Right. You're the one who brought up North Korea. I, I, I don't know. I mean, we got, hold on now, we got all kinds of issues going on here, don't we? You're the one who brought up North Korea. All right, what is the Obama foreign policy in Syria? Syria is a tough situation because neither They're all tough. Good. What's the Obama foreign policy in Egypt? I think it's to let democracy work. To let but democracy says, work them to go ahead and do elections and hurry up and get on with the democratic process, yes. Is it to endorse the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, which he seems to do passively, if not directly? Um, I don't think so. I think if he was doing that, then he would have called for Morsi to be back in power. He would have done what? No, you don't have to call for Morsi back in power in order to show sympathy for the Muslim Brotherhood. Do you know why Obama is hated by the people of Egypt when they were marching in the streets? They hated Morrissey, they hated our ambassador, and they hated Obama. Do you know why? Because he stood with the Muslim Brotherhood. He helped arm the Muslim Brotherhood. That's why. You know, strength through selectiveness. Maybe he's selecting the wrong uh, people to be supporting. All right, thank me for your call. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Anybody know what the Obama foreign policy is? That wasn't it, that's for sure. No, most people don't know. Even his supporters don't know what the Obama foreign policy is. And if I could get John D. Student Kerry on the program, don't worry, we're not even going to try. And not because I wouldn't take him, but because, you know, he'd rather talk to mass murder genocidal nutjobs than come on this program. Have you noticed that, Mr. Producer? We're going to engage, oh, excuse me, we're going to engage all over the world. Yes, we are.
we're going to talk to the Mugabe's and to the, the this one's and the that one's and the Palestinians and we'll, we'll talk to the Iranians if they'll talk to us and the, and the Muslim Brotherhood. Mark Levin showed, ah, nah, can't go on there, no time for that one. Uh, let's see, the Obama foreign policy? What is the Obama foreign policy? The liberals are having enormous difficulty coming up with uh, coherent positions. You know, if Ronald Reagan had done what Obama did today and said he wouldn't sit down with Putin, 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 whatever, the libs would be going nuts. They would be talking about how his foreign policy is a failure. They'd be going on and on about about how he's made the world so much more dangerous. Are you hearing that from the libs today? No. They called the program at, at my request. And what are you hearing? Well, you're hearing... Well, all kinds of maladies, I may say, you know, Tourette's, stuttering, incoherence. But when we cut through all the usual, what are we hearing? Idiocy. Idiocy. 